Greetings 40k fans, and today we'll be unboxing the new Gathering Storm Book 3 Rise of the Primarch and the Triumvirate of the Primarch. Yeah, if you follow the story through Fall of Cadia and Fracture of BL Tan, you'll know that it's been planned to bring back the great hero of the Imperium. In this case, the Loyalist Primarch, Rupert Gilliman. Now, I know he isn't everyone's favourite, but I've always been a big fan of the Ultramarines, so I thought, what better video to do on this series than the Ultramarines Primarch's return. And, if we get started, uh, I will sh won't spoil the story for you, although I might give you some hints. As you can see from the Triumvirate box, Cypher has returned with the Fallen Angels, and there is a new Grand Master of the Grey Knights as well. So without further ado, let's open up and have a look. The art in these books is always stunning, a mixture of the older ones and newer images as well. That's a classic image there. That is a brand new one. Rupert Gilliman returned. Now in this book, they do try to go to McCrag to restore Rupert Gilliman. The heroes from the previous books, but the Saris call and such. That's another one of the new images. They're defending McCrag after Rupert Gilliman's resurrection from the Black Legion. And they begin what is called the Terror Crusade, where Rupert Gilman travels to Terra to see the Emperor. Now the Chaos Gods don't necessarily think this is a bad thing, since they would very much like to corrupt Gilman to their side. But this is the first Lawless Primarch the Imperium's had in the 41st Millennium setting. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes in the story since all the other ones of the Chaos side are mostly still around, with some exceptions like Conrad Kurz. But in this book, it eventually leads to... Isn't that a great image there? Uh, Luna, the moon, of the moon of Terror, where he supposedly faces off with Magnus the Red. And he's up against Kairos Fate, which is there as well there in that image. And once again, the Legion of the Damned appear to be making an appearance. Now, there's been a lot of speculation on whether we'll find out that the Legion of the Damned are actually sort of like Imperial Demons, and whether that will be confirmed in this book, since they did have a, quite a large role in the first book of the Gathering Storm. And here's an image of Magnus, versing all the heroes of the Imperium, Belisarius Call, Robert Gilliman, St. Celestine, there's the Black Templars as well, and all the Eldar heroes as well. Another beautiful piece of artwork there. Before they finally reach Earth. Now, I won't show whether the last page is, and won't spoil the surprise as to whether Rupert Gilman becomes the new Emperor, which is being hinted. That he'll be well, it's not so much the new emperor, but more the imperial regent. His father will grant him command of the Imperium. But the other question to be answered is, does Cypher complete his mission? Do the Dark Angels get forgiven by him presenting the sword to the Emperor? Does he kill the Emperor? We'll have to wait and see. I'll leave you to read the book yourselves to find that out. Now let's have a look at the rules. As usual, there's some scenarios represent the various battles of the campaign. Uh, here we are, Cypher, Lord of the Fallen. He's weapon skill 7, ballistic skill 10, strength 4, toughness 4, weapon skill 3, initiative 8, attacks 3, leadership 10, 3 plus save. And he's got Eternal Warrior, and they shall know no fear, fleet, hit and run, infiltrate, and shrouded. And has as she so so shall she reap so shall he reap. Cipher cannot be selected as the warlord of an army. In addition, the leadership characteristic of the warlord of an army that includes Cipher suffers some minus one penalty. So just having him around makes your leadership worse, actually. But he's got some pretty good weapons as well. So as well frying crack grenades, he's obviously got his unique weapons. Blazing weapons. Cipher can shoot both of his pistols twice in each shooting phase, or can fire them once either before or after making a run. Move 
a run move. So you can fire him twice, or you can make a run move and then fire them, or fire them and then make a run move. So he's quite the, the pistolist. When making an overwatch shot, Cypher uses full ballistic skill. Well, that's pretty good. In the assault phase, half of Cypher's close combat attacks rounding up are strength 4 and AP 5, and all remaining attacks are strength 7 and AP 2. So he uses his pistols in close combat. Divine Protection. If there is an enemy model within d6 inches of Cypher, when he loses his last wound, it's otherwise removed as a casualty, and Cypher is assumed to have been captured alive. If there are no enemy models within this range when Cypher is removed as a casualty, then he has made a miraculous escape. If Cypher escapes, then he is not considered to be a casualty for the purposes of awarding victory points. So you have to have an enemy model near him to get his victory points. Mysterious Relics. Cypher's Pistols. A perfectly weighted pair of ornate pistols, Cypher's firearms are lethal in the extreme. Rendered all the more deadly by the owner's uncanny marksmanship, these weapons lay down a hail of bolt and plasma blasts fit to scythe whole squads of warriors from their feet. Cypher's bolt pistol is range 16, strength 4, AP 5, and the plasma pistol is range 12, strength 7, AP 2. And has In Pursuit of the Fallen. Cypher and his fellow Fallen have been the subject of a secret manhunt by the Dark Angels and their successors since the Horus Heresy. The chapter's relentless pursuit has driven the renegade warrior and his black armoured brethren to the far reaches of the galaxy, with Cypher so far managing to stay just a step ahead of his pursuers. The following rules are used in any mission which includes both Cypher or any unit of Fallen and models with the Dark Angels faction, at any cost. The following secondary objectives are used in addition to any others. If Cypher is captured, see Divine Protection, by a Dark Angels model, the player whose army includes the Dark Angels scores three victory points. If, Cy if the Cypher is forced to escape or is captured by a model, that is not a Dark Angel, and the other side receives any additional victory points. If Scyther is neither captured nor forced to escape before the end of the battle, the player whose army includes Scyther scores d3 victory points. Never forgive. All the Dark Angels models with the Deathwing special rule also receive the Zealot special rule for having him on the battlefield. In the opposing army. Next we have the Fallen themselves. They've just got fairly basic space marine stats, except they all have two attacks and can take really sort of standardised Dark Angels equipment. But you get their own formation here. Which allows them to have fall and lead any unit from this formation that is within 12 inches of Cypher and has the eight, and they shall know no fear and stubborn special rules. So basically he makes all the fallen stubborn if you have this formation with Cypher and at least three units fallen. Well, one to three units. Next we move on. I have a new appendix for the Grey Knights. You may have missed a page there. Yes, there we go. Grandmaster Voldus, Warden of the Librarius. He's weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 5, strength 4, toughness 4, weapons 3, initiative 5, attacks 4, leadership 10, save 2 plus. He has Terminator armor, as well like all the Grey Knight Terminator Masters. And has Law Master. Voldus knows one, one more power than is normal for his mastery level. This must be generated from the demonology Sanctic Discipline. And he is a mastery level 3 normally, so he gets 4 powers. He's a Psyker. Grandmaster Voldus generates his powers from the demonology Sanctic, Divination, Formination, Geokinesis, Librarius, Pyronancy, Technomancy, Telekinesis, and Telepathy Discipline. And has Relic of Titan, Malice, Air, Argrim. Crafted over a century by the blind smith Culliver, this beautifully weighted hammer is a conduit for psychic energy. So empowered it streaks through the air as though it weighed nothing at all, only to strike with the force of a caged thunderbolt. Has strength times two, AP two, melee, force, concussive, demon bane, specialist weapon. And then you have the Bulwark of Purity, a new formation. It needs a librarian from Codex Grey Knights, two units of paladins from Codex Grey Knights, and two units of Grey Knight Terminators. And has Bulwark Formation, while three or more units from this formation are on the battlefield, you can add one to the result when making Deny the Witch Tests. Aura of Purity, while three or more units from this formation are on the battlefield, if any unit from the formation successfully manifests the Banishment Psychic Power, all units with the Demon Special Rule within 12 inches of any unit from this formation are affected. So you can affect a whole wide area of demons if you've got this formation on the table. And here he is, the man himself, what we've been looking forward to. Rupert Gilman, Primarch of the Ultramarines, the first 40k Loyalist Primarch. Now, his stats are Weapon Skill 9, Ballistic Skill 6, Strength 6, Toughness 6, Wound 6, Initiative 6, Attack 6, Leadership 10, Save 2+, and he's a monstrous creature. So, 
nothing less than you were expecting. He is completely badass. He is Lord Commander of the Imperium. Friendly units from the armies of the Imperium re-roll failed morale checks and fear and pinning tests while Gilliman is on the battlefield. Primarch of the 13th Legion, you can choose to enact the Devastator Assault and Tactical Doctrines, so you can experience once each per game in addition to any you can already use. When any one of these combat doctrines is enacted, all Ultramarines models in your army are affected. So not just the specific ones that normally be affected, everyone in the Ultramarines gets it. Unyielding Will. Rupert Gilman's leadership is not subject to negative modifiers of any kind, and he may re-roll failed to neither which tests. So even if he's lost combat somehow by 15, he will always take it on his basic leadership. All of trait absolute mastery. Rupert Gilman has all of the command traits from Warmer 40,000 the rules. Literally all of them. That's impressive. He has Adamantium Will, Chapter Takes his Ultramarines, Eternal Warrior, Fearless, Feel No Pain, Fleet, Precision Shots, Precision Strikes, and Preferred Enemy Chaos. The category Chaos comprises all units for the Chaos Demons, Chaos Space Marines, or Corn Demon Kin factions. Relics of Ultramar, the Emperor's Sword and Hand of Dominion. These weapons are used together using the profile below. Strength 10, AP 1, Melee Armor Bane, Concussion, so Concussion Soul Blaze, Touch of the Emperor, Whirling Flame. And Touch of the Emperor gives any attacks with this weapon with a hit to hit roll of 6 are resolved at Strength D rather than Strength 10. Ouch. Uh, a Whirling Flame in the flight, fight sub phase, rather than making attacks normally, Gilliman can make a number of attacks with this weapon against each enemy unit engaged in his combat, equal to the number of models from that unit within one inch of him. The Hand of Dominion can also be used as a ranged weapon, using the profile below. It may be used as both a melee weapon and a ranged weapon in the same turn, which in, case, in which case it is range 24 inches, strength 6, AP 2, assault 3, rending. So it's an AP 2 heavy bolter, with an extra strength. And then he's got the Armor of Fate. The Armor of Fate confers a 3 plus invulnerable save. In addition, if Rupert Gilman is slain, place a marker at the spot where, at which he was slain. At the beginning of your next turn, roll a dice on a 4 plus or more, Gilliman is re restored by his armor. Place him as close as possible to the marker, more than one inch from any units, with D3 wounds remaining, otherwise Gilliman is slain. If the marker is on the battlefield at the end of the game, Gilliman is, con yeah, sorry, is considered to be slain. So he gets back up again, with possible three wounds. So not only is it really hard to kill, but he can get straight back up again, if you're lucky. And you get the Triumvirate of the Primarch Formation, which means you need Cypher, Grandmaster Voldus, and Rupert Gilliman. Contents of this box. They have Touch by Fate. You can reroll one failed saving throw each turn for each model in th from this formation. Inspiring Presence. While Grandmaster Volus, Rupert Gilliman are on the battlefield, all friendly units with the armies of the Imperium faction have the stubborn special rule. So it makes the whole army stubborn. And then you've got the Victrix Guard formation. You need Captain Sicarius, one unit of Honor Guard, four units of Stern Guard veterans or Vanguard veterans in any combination, and it gives you. Fight like demigods. Add one to the weapon skill and base ballistic skill characteristic of all models in this formation. So they instantly all get a stat buff. The Primarch's chosen. While a unit from this formation is within three inches of Rupert Gilliman, he can make a lookout sir roll as if he was part of that unit. So you can always look out sir for Rupert Gilliman if you're within three inches of him. Doesn't matter if he's not in your unit, you can just do it. Making him even harder to kill. So Definitely, definitely impressive if you could take that unit with him. And then you've got some new Warlord traits and Relics of Ultramar. Well, that's the book. Let's get on with looking at these models. Nice image there, with a triumvirate. So a free little post here. Instruction manual. And rules as well. So that if you didn't have the book, you could still use them. And there it is. Pieces of Gilliman. Needs three sprues just for him. Cipher. That's Grandmaster Voldus, that one. And this one is Cipher. 
The lion's sword there on his back. Each of these Touch the Games Workshop standard, beautifully sculpted. The Emperor's flaming sword there. The crushed dead chaos chosen on his feet. And you obviously this comes with two head options. You can either take Rubik Gilliman with or without helmet, but honestly, who's not going to have him bareheaded? So you can all see that it's Rubik Gilliman. Although if you did use the head and did a, uh, the other helmeted head, and did a bit of conversion, you could maybe make him into another Primarch for your other chapters. All right, that's all we have this time. So remember to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Bye.